A Feynman path integral problem 2-2, the solution. More solutions are available on chrisbritton.com. I'm posting all the stuff there. See a description of the video uh, for links uh, that are helpful for this uh, on how to solve this problem and also to the website. Uh, problem 2-2, show that the classical action for a harmonic oscillator is this. This is stated, this is given, Another, uh, or stated, not really given. These are the givens. He gives the Lagrangian and he gives the time interval for all the little time integral increments that you're, uh, you're uh, solving for. Okay, so you can read this later. But basically, what we do is anytime we're starting a, a, a classical action problem, you start with some equation of motion. So we said the, the harmonic oscillator here, and from our past studies, let's say undergrad, or there's a link on, the, on harmonic oscillators, but you should know or somehow arrived that this is the classical uh, harmonic oscillator description, uh, x of t equals a sine omega t. Uh, plus b cosine omega t. Uh, so we have some uh, boundary conditions. We start out with some information, right? We know, uh, we at least know something like at the beginning time at t equals a, where is it? There it is. At t equals a, the particle is at x a. Okay. At the beginning time, it's really t equals zero, right? So that's known. And then also at the ending time, tv. Okay, we know that the particle is going to be at xb. So those are the things we know, right? Um, all right, so let's let's plug in what we know into equation one to solve for the boundaries at x sub zero. So at x sub zero, I just simply insert a zero here in all of them, and this goes to the sine gets killed and the cosine becomes one, and so x sub zero equals b. But x sub zero is the beginning state of x, which we know as a. Okay, we know that at x sub zero, the particle is at x, the position x sub a. So b equals x sub a, so that's one down. Now you have to solve for a, and so I rewrite this, okay? And so I rewrite it with the b that we just solved for, uh, and you evaluate it at large t, which is the time increment. Um, so I rewrite it with large t, large t, you put them in everything, but I'm just I'm basically just solving for a, and so that's how you find a. Now I know a and b, I can insert it back into uh, my harmonic oscillator equation. Uh, if you insert a and b, this, uh, you put that in for a and you put that in for b. Okay, so now you have your x. Now how do you get your x dot? You need your x dot, uh, your time derivative of x, uh, for the Lagrangians, but you basically just take the derivative of your x. So I take the derivative, the time derivative, of all of this chunk and I let Mathematica do that. You can do it by hand, but this is the answer. Uh, x dot is x, x with the dot, right? Uh, and then xb is x sub b. I just do it because Mathematica understands it better. Okay, so it's pretty... So, oh, and then co cosecant is one over sine, but whatever. Anyways, uh, now I have x, I have x dot, so I can insert these values into L, right? I'm gonna insert these values in L. x dot right there, x right there, and all of that goes to this integral is massive and ugly, right? And so now you have your L, so you need to put your L in the uh, action integral. So you, this is the giant L, jeez, okay, right there. And it's for dt, right? And it's from zero to t. And again, notice uh, that in L, there's little t's and there's big t's. Okay, you can insert your boundaries later so you can avoid this, so the L only has little t's, but anyways, just remember that it's okay for big t's and little t's as long as you integrate for little t from zero to big t in this problem. Um, and so you can't, I can't readily do that. There's a way to do it online using uh, partial uh, derivative, partial integration. There's links you can search for, I'll include them. Um, so if you, I have Mathematica, so I'm gonna use Mathematica to compute this. If you don't have Mathematica, you can use Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, which is a website, and I'm pretty sure it could do this integral uh, pretty easily, and it's free. Um, so if you have to do it for school or whatever, there's uh, uh, a guy who solved it using integration by parts. Just Google search and I'll include that in the web page. But anyways, using Mathematica to solve this. Okay, first I set my a, okay, which I solve for what? I set my b variable, which I solve for above. I enter my x, and so a and b are in memory, so Mathematica is going to load these variables into this equation and save all of that as x. Okay, so now I have my x. I'm going to just calculate my x dot by taking the derivative, this is the derivative sign of Mathematica, of x for t, and then you save that as x dot. So that's done in one step. So I have all this in memory, and then I can set my L 
to what's given in the equation. And so that inputs all of this crap into the L and then saves it to memory a as L. And I don't want to output it. I know what it looks like. It looks like this. Okay. So then the classical action, you integrate L, which is loaded with all this stuff, from T, from 0 to T, big T. And then I'll just hit enter and see how fast it can calculate it. There, done. So that's the answer. Uh, the cosecant, it doesn't look like his because it has a cosecant. And so down here, just remember the cosecant is actually just one over sine. So if you move that over here, you just move the sign over there and then you shift some things around, you get Feynman's answer. And that's problem two, two. Or two, three? No, this is problem two, two.